Today we're gonna to take a look at the hardiness zone map and last frost freeze dates. Hi, I'm Heidi from Garden Crossings and it's getting to that time of year where we're starting to plan for 2024. For those of you who are new to our station, I just wanted to let you know that Garden Crossings is a mail order company that ships plants all over the United States. We've been doing so for about 30 years now and we take pride in the annuals, perennials and shrubs that we grow. So we're taking pre-orders at this point for spring shipping of 2024. So I wanted to kind of explain to you, um, I'm sure you've seen there's been a lot of information on hardiness zone maps around the last week or so. So I wanted to explain to you how we do our shipping and how it is based off of that hardiness zone map. So we'll quickly talk on that and then we'll dive deeper into a hardiness zone map and different things that can affect your hardiness zone along with your frost freeze zone. So when we start shipping in the spring, we base it off of your hardiness zone. Your hardiness zone is divided into A or B, so 5A, 5B, 6A, 6, uh, 6B, and we break out our shipping weeks based off of your zone. This is not your last frost freeze date. So if the date we are recommending to ship your plants seems a little early for your area, you have the ability to go ahead and adjust that ship week to when it is more appropriate for your zone. So let's take a closer look at hardiness zone. There's a lot of information, so I have my notes with me today to make sure that I'm giving you all the proper information. So basically your hardiness zone map, this is a map that helps you understand if a plant you are looking to plant is hardy for your area. This map is a guideline, it is not a rule. Like everything, there's always variables that can come into play. The lower the number is, the colder the zone you're in. So there is um, 13 zones in the United States, and if you're watching from Canada today, your hardiness zone map is gonna be different than ours here in the United States. So make sure you're looking at your hardiness zone map for plants in your area. So if you're in zones two or three, you are really northern United States. If you're zones 10 or 11, you're very south in the United States. Just to kind of give you an idea of who's where with their zones. Each zone represents a 10 degree gap. So the zones are broken down into A and B, which helps break that 10 degrees down further into a five degree uh, gap. So I had mentioned zone 5A, zone 5B, it just breaks your area down just a little bit closer so you know, you know what your hardiness is. We are located in Zeeland, Michigan, and we are a zone 6A. If we head just 10 miles to the west towards Lake Michigan, they are just a little bit warmer due to the lake and they are a zone 6B. So you can be very close to your friend or your neighbor and their hardiness zone might be just a little bit different than your own. So for us, because it's 6A to 6B, not that much of a variable. But if you think more like along the lines of 5B to 6A, you'll notice that plants start getting numbered differently. There's a five and there's a six. So kind of be careful when you're watching that. I know a lot of people do like to push their zones and I'm not saying it's wrong, but I am saying that you need to be careful if you are somebody who likes to push your zone. So when they assign the zones, there's a lot of things that are not taken into account. Um, basically, they're taking uh, your yearly temperatures for the year to see what your highs and your lows are and what the average is. So it's, it's, it's an educated guess, but there's a lot of variables that might be happening in your yard and in your garden that are not taken into account when they have assigned you your zone. So some of the things that you need to take into account with why your plants may not be overwintering when you think you've done the right thing by buying the proper plant for your zone and it doesn't come back. So here are a few things to take into account when buying your plants. So you have to take freeze thaw cycles into account. So if you're getting a lot of freezing and thawing going on, that can affect a plant and can sometimes affect if it comes back or not. You also have to take into account if you have snow cover or not. 
So we here in Michigan and in a lot of the areas in the north, we get snow. And snow actually, although it sounds like it wouldn't be a good thing, it is a very nice thing because snow provides insulation to the plants and that does help give them that little boost to help them overwinter. You also have to take into account how much precipitation do you get in the year. So if you're in an area that just does not get any rain, so let's say we're in Michigan and we don't get much rain in the winter, we don't get much snow in the winter, and we have a lot of plants that maybe don't come back. Well, that's because those plants did not get any precipitation in the winter. So we rely heavily on our snow cover because snow melts to water, which gives the plants precipitation or moisture. Um, also, when we do get rain, that helps keep those plants moist as well. So if you have a very dry winter where you're at, that can affect if your plants come back or not. Um, a lot of times we'll see that, especially with arborvitaes here in Michigan, is if we have a very dry winter where we don't get much rain or snow, we'll find that they, um, they don't do well in the winter. So that's just one example of a plant that comes to the top of my mind that on a very dry winter here does not do well. Another thing to keep in mind is the type of soil that you're planting into. So if you're planting into clay soil and you do happen to get a lot of moisture in the winter and that moisture just has no place to drain away to, a lot of times those plants can experience winter uh, root rot, not winter rot, but root rot because they're just sitting in that water all winter long. So that can affect if your plant may or may not come back. Another thing to keep in mind is when did you plant that plant? Did you plant it at the very, very end of fall or in the winter when the plant didn't have enough time for its roots to get established? A lot of times we find that if you've planted your plants too late in the season and they have not had enough times for their roots to get established, that they may not come back. A good example of that, especially here for us in Michigan, would be when people are planting their garden mums after they're in full flower, it's late in the season, and that plant just has no time or energy to put roots down for the following spring. So a lot of times with garden mums, we sell them as annuals here in Michigan because they just do not overwinter because they get planted too late in the season. You might also find on the opposite end of the spectrum that you have microclimates in your yard. So areas in your yard that let you kind of push those limits. I know I personally have a few microclimates in my yard and that is because we have a creek that runs along the back. Somebody's thinking she said creek and she should have said crick. I don't know, are you a creaker or a cricker? Uh, but anyways, sorry, <laughs> that was a squirrel moment. Um, but anyways, because we have that creek in the backyard, that keeps our back hill just a little extra warm. So I can get away, even though I'm a zone 6A, I can get away with planting zone 7, and even on a few rare occasions, zone 8 plants that come back year after year. So look for those little microclimates in your yard because those are areas where if you wanna to try to push the limit, you might be able to. Another area in your yard where you might have a microclimate, and this works for some people and maybe not for others, but if you're planting plants closer to your house, your house is giving off heat, it's radiating heat from the, the heat that you're putting in your house for the winter, and that's keeping some of those plants that you have planted by the foundation of your home just a little bit warmer. So that too, even though it's not a actual microclimate, if there's a plant that you're a little bit more concerned if it's gonna do well or not do well because of overwintering, planting it closer to your house may help. Another thing to keep in mind with if your plants don't come back is do you have a pet? Do you have a dog that's running through your yard? Um, be very aware of where your dog is going to the bathroom. If the dog is using your flower bed as its favorite place for using the bathroom, those plants may not come back just because of the acidity of the urine. Think about the brown spots that occur in your grass after the winter. If that's happening in your garden, that can be detrimental to your plants as well. There's also a few plants that in the fall, many are gonna recommend that you don't trim. And those would be more your hollow stemmed type plants. So like your Russian sage, your rose mallow, your hardy hibiscus. Now we personally here at Garden Crossings, because 
the only time or the best time for us to do our trimming in our gardens is in the fall we trim everything back and we've not had any problems but i do get a lot of people questioning me on why am i doing that because i'm not supposed to and the trend in the majority of people are going to tell you your hollow your hollow stem perennials to wait until the spring to trim them so that you have better chances of their survival in the winter so like i said this hardiness zone map is a map it's a guideline there's a lot of exceptions that can occur so just keep that in mind when you are selecting your plants that you're using this as a guideline. So now how do you select your plants to make sure that they are in your hardiness zone? So one thing to mention is, is when you are planting within your hardiness zone, you're primarily looking at your perennials and your shrubs, plants that come back year after year. If you're growing annuals, you don't need to worry so much about the hardiness zone map because annuals are grown for a, a season. Uh, so for us, we're growing our annuals for um, April through October. They don't need to overwinter, so I don't need to worry about if they're hardy or not here in Michigan. So when picking your plants, you wanna make sure you're picking the right plants for your zone. So I am in a zone six, so I want to make sure that plants that I am picking are at least a zone six. They can be a five, they can be a four, they can be a three, and they will do fine. They can even be seven, eight, nine, but they have to have six in the range of what that plant is hardy in. So if you're in a zone seven, you don't want to grab a plant that's hardy zone eight to 10 because that won't be hardy in your area. Make sure that seven is in the range of hardiness. So if it says a plant is hardy from zones four through nine, seven was in the middle there. So that plant is going to be hardy where you are growing it. There's usually a top number and a bottom number when you are looking at the hardiness zone. So let's say the plant is hardy in zones five through eight and you're growing it in a zone nine. So why may or may not it work for you? So the plant might grow in your zone, but what you may find is that it doesn't flower well or grow well for you. A lot of plants do need to go through a proper dormant cycle or cool spell to initiate the flowers for the following season. So again, you can try pushing your limits and seeing how the plant does. I mean, we can't guarantee it, but I know a lot of people do like to push their limits. Um, but what we're finding is, is that you probably will notice that you're just not going to see the performance in that plant that you would be hoping for. Next, let's talk about planting perennials and shrubs in containers. How do you choose the proper hardiness when you're planting them in containers? Can you go with that same rule? If you're in zone six, I can plant zone six in a container and successfully have them over winter. The recommendation is, is that if you are planting your perennials and shrubs in a container, that you select a plant that is at least two zones colder than the plant, than the zone that you are planting in. So for an example, I'm a zone six. I want to make sure that the perennials and shrubs that I am planting in my container are hardy down to at least a zone four to ensure that they are going to overwinter in those containers. And the reason is, is when you have a plant planted in the ground, it's got so much insulation from the ground that helps those roots overwinter. But when you're planting in a planter or a window box or something like that, you've got airflow all around that planter box and it just does not have the proper insulation to help keep those roots warm to get through the winter. So that's why we're recommending that you go two zones colder to make sure that your plants do overwinter. Growing zones and frost-free dates are often confusing, and understandably so. The difference is what plants should overwinter in your area compared to when is the first date that I can start planting after the frost is going to be done in my area for the season. So this is a very, it doesn't correlate. So if you're in zone six, that doesn't mean all zone sixes are going to have that same last frost freeze date. For example, I'm sure there's areas in Kentucky or Tennessee that are a zone six, like we are here in Michigan, 
but their last frost freeze date is going to come much earlier than what ours is. So definitely consider your location as to when your last frost freeze date is. The last frost freeze day is an average of when you can expect your last frost or freeze for the season. So there's different things that can affect when your last frost freeze, days, frost freeze date is. Number one, where you live. Different areas are going to have a different frost freeze date. Um, those of you in the south, your date is going to be much earlier in the season than what ours is in the north. And it, that makes sense. Other variables are your elevation. Different elevations are going to get their frost. The higher you are, the later in the season, you're going to still get frost and freezes. Another thing is, is your proximity to bodies of water. So a lot of times your bodies of water, especially like Lake Michigan, it freezes, but it doesn't necessarily freeze over. So that's keeping the lake shore warmer than what it is further in. And also to weather patterns. We all have various weather patterns and that's something that we have to watch. Uh, one year, our last frost here in Michigan could be end of April and the next year it could be more like the third week in May. So we definitely are always listening to our weather people and what they're forecasting and kind of going off of, you know, what they're seeing as trends of what the weather is going to be for the next two, three weeks around the time frame of when our projected last frost freeze date is supposed to be. The biggest thing is to remember is that Mother Nature is going to do what she wants to do. And we can have maps and we can have guidelines and all those things, but they're just what they are. They're guidelines, they're not rules, and Mother Nature will break them if she wants to. So always keep in mind um, what's going on in your area as far as the weather. Uh, and so back to shipping. So at Garden Crossings, we will assign you an estimated ship week based off of your hardiness zone. Like I mentioned earlier, if that date just seems too early or too late for where you're at, you do have the opportunity to change that date to what makes sense for you because ultimately you know your area best. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Thanks for watching. I'm Heidi from Garden Crossings.